Hi, I'm now going to go through three examples of transmission media which are commonly used in most networks. Now just before I start on wireless media, to say what media means, because media we often associate with say TV or newspapers as in the media, but in this example media is used to mean the substance being used really because a transmission medium is the channel in which data can be sent through. Now a definition I rewrote about seven times because it's quite hard to define but really this is our actual physical substance or system we are sending data through. So you might have a switch or a wireless router and a laptop and a phone in our network but how is data being sent between them? Well it's going through a transmission medium. Medium is the singular version of media by the way. So to first look at air as a medium for communication. This is related to wireless communication, stuff which is going through the air. Things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both use radio waves to communicate. Now details of Wi-Fi in particular will be covered in a future video, but both are specific standards, meaning wireless communication is a general concept, but Wi-Fi and Bluetooth have got a very specific set of rules for how you communicate using them and both have a set of frequencies used just for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So part of what makes Wi-Fi Wi-Fi and not just general wireless communication is Wi-Fi uses waves just in a certain frequency range and the same is true for Bluetooth. Now Wi-Fi is generally used for your local area networks so your house, so your place of work. Their range is not massive it might be say 100 meters unless you extend it with a wireless access point. But Bluetooth is generally a much smaller range, potentially just down to say 10 meters, maybe a little bit more in some cases, but generally much smaller. So Bluetooth is used for your personal stuff, things like your wireless headphones, your smartwatch, they'll run using Bluetooth. There is nothing special about Bluetooth itself. Bluetooth is just a standard which has become quite popular. You could use other frequencies it's just Bluetooth is quite widely supported. Now, another downside to Bluetooth is it has got a lower bandwidth, generally speaking, than Wi-Fi. The bandwidth is all about how much data you can fit through the network at any given point. But if we were to evaluate Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi, actually Bluetooth is what we could describe as ad hoc. An ad hoc network is a network which you can set up very quickly and very easily. Setting up a Wi-Fi network is not exactly rocket science, but as you might know from experience, can take some time. You've got to install a wireless network adapter. You've got to plug in the wireless router to a particular area of your home where you've got a port. It's not as flexible as compared to Bluetooth, which you can just toggle on and off on your phone, say. Very easy and flexible to set up. So that is definitely an advantage of Bluetooth. Now that is a quick comparison between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but generally you can compare wireless to wired. That's quite a common exam question to consider, is it more suitable to go for a wired network or a wireless one? I will leave that evaluation for another video because right now I just want to go over two common examples of wired media. The first of which are copper cables. A cable is just a series of parallel wires in this image we've got a bunch of copper strands and together they form a wire uh, and then we've got a cable itself. So probably stating the obvious here but data is transmitted through these cables using electrical signals so the electricity is carrying our data through these cables. Ethernet will use copper cables for example and copper itself is chosen as a material as a metal because it is good at conducting electricity it has high electrical conductivity. It's not the most conductive substance. You could use silver, which is better. Gold is also good, but clearly they are more expensive. And so it's a trade off between a small increase in speed and performance versus a big increase in cost. One weakness to standard copper cables is because you've got all these strands, each of which is sending electricity, they can suffer what is called cross torque where one cable or one wire, I should say, affects another wire. And this interferes. So interference is a quite common problem where the data being sent degrades and suffers errors because it's being interfered with by signals which are generating spillover, you could say, nearby. Now that will cause errors in your transmission. If you send data 
and it suffers interference, it won't arrive in the same way you are hoping it will, which can slow the network down, you've got to resend it and that can take some time. Interference can happen with wireless connections too. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi can interfere quite a lot because those radio waves have got similar frequencies and can collide, at least you can picture it like that, which can also cause errors. So it's not just copper alone, but to mitigate it, there is another more specific type of copper cable called a coaxial cable, also called a coax, which effectively wraps a lot of insulation around the copper itself to try and prevent interference between separate copper wires. This is a little bit more expensive, but can improve performance. Speaking of improved performance, for most high-end type of wired media are fiber optic cables. If you pay for better internet, you're probably paying for fiber optic, for example. Uh, it's often advertised, I'm sure you would have come across that term before. So fiber optic cables, as the word optic would suggest, uses pulses of light to transmit the data instead of electricity. So no electricity going through these cables, it's just pulses of light. And it's actually a transparent core, which it travels through, and this core is usually some very light and flexible glass, or plastic in some cases. It can be quite brittle, so it can break sometimes. Now, despite this core being transparent, just being glass or plastic, which is clear, light is kept inside the fibre because the light is undergoing internal reflection, in theory, total internal reflection, where it's kept in because you've got the outside bit of the cladding with a lower refractive index. Now, that's a physics topic, so we're not going into that in too much detail, but it does mean these have generally got quite a good range because the light is not escaping, although the range does degrade over time because the material is not always perfect and it may not be total internal reflection. Some of it might seep out and eventually lose power. So the range is, bit, is good, but not perfect. But the benefit is due to data traveling at the speed of light, which is the fastest you can get in the universe, the latency is very low meaning it's very fast, effectively, right? This is very quick. It's not, you know, remarkably quicker than copper. Copper is not slow. It's still going incredibly fast, but fiber optic is the fastest. The issue being they are more expensive than copper cables. And like I alluded to, they are quite brittle and so can break more easily. They have got a good range, but again, like I said, this can degrade over long distances.